What a fantastic week for Rovers. We continue the run. And can we continue the run further? Let's chat. Welcome to the 1875 podcast. This podcast is all about Blackburn Rovers and it's brought to you by the number one fan Rovers website, roverschat.com. So let me welcome back the regular Tom. Hello. And uh, we have a special guest this week um, from 4,000 Holes uh, Fan Magazine, uh, Scott. Welcome, Scott. Hey. Yeah, we're really thanks for the invite. Yeah, it's brilliant to have you on. So for uh, for the fans that don't know about the 4,000 Holes, uh, can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, well, do. Um, it actually started a really long time ago in 1989. It was kind of an era where Andines were a, a big thing. It's kind of an independent voice from the club really just for any fans to have a say so I suppose nowadays the internet's changed that but um and the fanzine haven't been running for a few years but I thought I'd just give it a go and try to get it up and running and um, so this season we put out two issues already um issue 88 out and um, it'll be available again at the Walsall not Walsall Bristol Rovers game this Saturday so yeah, they encourage anyone who's not picked it up yet just to give it a chance. It's only one fifty, so it's half the price of a program, and we think you get twice the entertainment. Right, Billy. How long have you been uh, involved in it then? Have you just are you part of the re- revival, or were you part of it when it was uh, originally going? Yeah, I'm just part of the revival, really. Um, previous guy Dan Clough gave it up four years ago because of all the commitment. So I just, you know. Thought, yeah, this would be a fun thing to get involved with. Um, and thankfully, it's all down to people getting in touch again, like people who contributed back in the early 90s, um, who've got back in touch and you know, been writing for it again. Um, and yeah, it's been a success so far. I think we've sold maybe over 500 copies so far. This season, Brilliant, which yeah, is pretty good going. Um, um, and one hit continues, so yeah. It's, Second issue this season out now, as I've said, then there's one coming out at Christmas, and then yeah, it's just keeping keeping it going really as as long as it can because it's sort of a, a roving institution really with it being going for so long, almost yeah. thirty years. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's a cracking starting point. I mean, I can only see it going up in in sales in the in the future. Really, um, what what sort of stuff can we can we find in that for uh, people who haven't read it? Yeah, so it's um, it's a bit different to say what you get in a program, which is a bit more straight laced and serious. So the whole idea of a fanzine is really just it's all a bit of a laugh, really. So there's like a lot of satirical content in there, like cartoons, you know, jokes, um, quizzes, and you know, just basically fans writing in and having a bit of a rant. Um, like, yeah, 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 it happens. Um, we've got a good series going at the moment, uh, the Who Who Were You series, which um, Simon Smith is running. And it's kind of a picking out obscure players from the past who didn't really set the world alight at Ewood and kind of having a look into them and having a bit of a, a, a mock at them, if, if you like. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of varied stuff in there. It's kind of a, a cobbled together. Um, little magazine at home really with that feedback has been good so I think people are enjoying it so yeah as I said if you get a chance you know just pick it up and see what you think and you know maybe you'll come back for more later in the season yeah yeah well, I'll be honest I haven't, I haven't read it I did plan on picking it up but I never got around to it but you've, you've certainly made me want to uh, get the next one anyway uh, but we can still get the yeah. we can still get issue 88 now now anyway, can't we? Am I right in that? Um, issue 87 was the first one this season. Sorry. And there's still, some, there's still some of those available. So, yeah, you can still get 87 and 88. Um, so, yeah. Brilliant. So, yeah, if you haven't if you haven't checked that out, um, why don't you check it out and go, go buy it at, uh, on Saturday at Bristol? 
Um, right, so let's get into it. We've only got one question this week, and we're going to start with it because it's something we're going to hit on um, throughout this podcast, I would have thought. But Dan from Snapchat, having scored nine goals in the past three games, do you think we are finally coming into form? Now, he's put go Tom at the end of it, so I don't know whether he's cheering for you, Tom, or he's, he's asking you to, to answer the question. So we'll start with you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so um, I, th- I think you have a little uh, a little fan club going. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Um, no, um, I think yeah, uh, I was very impressed, especially against Bury, because um, I didn't go to Oxford, so I'm not too sure on how many chances we had. Um, but especially against Bury, I thought that the complaints that I had, maybe against Plymouth, where we were having chances and weren't finishing them. Um, definitely went against Bury because Bury we didn't actually create all that many clear cut chances we created about about three or four and we scored three goals so um, I think that that does suggest that in terms of strikers yeah we are coming into form um, it's worth noting that of two of those do we so what well, that's nine is that including the last league game against Fleetwood that the two against Fly, I assume it is yeah it, um, it, it must be yeah uh, it's worth noting that was a draw, so yeah, I don't know about that. Um, but definitely the past two games um, is, is led me to, to feel more confident about where we could could go um, for the rest of the season. But then we've been in this position before when we, we beat Rochdale and MK Dons, haven't we? So you just got to hope that the, yeah. it's, it's not a false another false start. What, what about you, Scott? Are you, uh, are you thinking we're final into form? Or- yeah, yeah, I really hope so. Um, it's been a strange season in terms of goal scored and goal conceded, really. Because if you think back in August, we're, we're all worried about the defence more than anything, especially after Lena and got injured. Um, but then suddenly we put all these clean sheets and, you know, hardly conceded any goals. And it's actually been up front there. You know, we've been struggling to convert enough chances, really. So thankfully, that seems to have changed the last two games. And, and you know we we finishing up the easy chances. We you know we creating creating chances and yeah, almost it was it, it, it it's got that feeling at the moment as as we were at, say the start of September where we we put that great run together with four wins in the league on the trot and then now we've got a, a nice home game against Bristol Rovers and you think we should win it but then. We thought we were going to beat Wimbledon back in September and to new them we didn't quite go that way. But I don't know, it feels different. It just feels like we've got a lot more settled team. Mowbray knows the best formation. We've got Dak finally after his after his poor start with injuries. Suddenly he's, he's just the main man and everything's revolving around him and he's looking brilliant. So a lot more confident now, I think, yeah. Do you do you think Nuttall has uh, has got that place now up front? Do you think he's done enough to uh, to to start every game if he's fitting off Scott? I think so. It'll be interesting actually to see what Mowbray does on Saturday because we know he likes to rotate it a bit occasionally. Um, I'm glad to see he gave Nuttall another chance on Tuesday, and obviously he just seems to have that knack of been in the right place at the right time. I know he wants the cleanest of finishes, but he's just one of those players where, you know, he'll just get your goals and, you know, other players that might have bobbled wide, but for him, it, it just went in the back of the net. So I, just, I don't think at the moment Samuel and Graham are really offering enough to, to threaten for that starting role. So he could well start him again and that'd be three starts in a week yeah. which you know finally we're all seeing him fully integrated into the team which is what a lot of people have been calling for since well even since August when he scored against Stoke on 21s yeah I think I think he's doing a lot off the ball as well he's he's making runs it's freeing Dak up a little bit that he's more dangerous and then front four um, Antonson Bennett uh, Nuttall and Dak I mean they're they are a powerful unit. Uh, now they've got going. Antonson scored three in the last two games. Um, I think he's our top goal scorer in the league now. And he, he could be such a big part of the season. Do you think he is going to be a, a key player for us this season, Tom? 
Um, he had a lot of stick, didn't he? Um, because his end product yeah. sometimes is a bit off. But I always thought that even if he wasn't going to have the best game, uh, you weren't ever going to get anything less than one hundred percent. I thought he would do a lot of running. Um, which I think why Mowbray often shows him ahead of Graham um, at the start of the season, especially when Mantenson was playing more as a an out and out striker with Samuel. Um, I think that's the main reason because the run he gets through. Um, now, am I hoping that he's turned a corner in terms of his his end product as well? Um, I'm hoping so. I mean, he has been scoring goals, hasn't he? But is he six in the league yeah. now, or is he six altogether? I'm not too sure. But he, either way, I think he, he is. A, like you say, he's our top goal scorer um, now. Uh, so yeah, um, I think he will be vital. But other word, a nut all as well. Um, I sort of think he's a finished product, um, not by any stretch of imagination. No, no, no. Um, and I mean, his goal was lucky last night. It doesn't matter how it comes. Like uh, Scott said, the fact is he went in the back of the net, so it doesn't matter if it was lucky or not. Um, yeah. Well, it was a bit like his first, I can't, who, who was it against? Was it Barnett? It, all he had to do was tap it in, but it was the fact that he was in the right place. He was ready yeah, for he, it. he was in that area. He was in, in, in the six-yard area around that around that uh, bit. Um, I was actually surprised that Nuttall started last night. I would have liked to see Graham um, start. That's not to say that I was disappointed. With Nutto starting, because like I said, I really do think he's a he's a fantastic prospect, and he's he's proving the people that said that he wasn't ready for the first team, me included in that. He's yeah, uh, yeah, proven us, was, he's, he's proven us proven us all all wrong by banging in the goals. Um, and Nutto, Dak, Antonson, and Bennett, like you said, that I suppose from from four are really uh, proving um, to be quite a threat going forward. If anything, if, if the last yeah. two games are anything to go by. So, yeah, well, long may it continue. Well, just going back to what you said about the, the Berry game, it, Mowbray would have found it difficult to, to change that side going into the Oxford game after after such a convincing win. So, I, I'm not surprised that he did start. But coming up against Bristol now, three games in a week, I'm, I'm not sure if it might be a little bit too much for, uh, for Nuttall. What do you think, Scott? Do you think do you think he's going to start on Saturday? Um, I think it's a toss up, really. I think I suspect he'll keep him in actually, um, give him another run out because he, you know, he, you can't argue with his goal scoring record. And just like Antonson, when they're scoring the goals, you, you know, it, it seems a strange decision to you know try and rotate it. Um, I'd love to see Graham get back in and be scoring goals, but. I think you've got to go with, with, with form, really. And, and I do. I think he'll start. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd love to see Graham back in because I think I think fans love him and uh, we love using that uh, that gif. So um, it'd be nice to have him back. But yeah, I can't I can't see not all being dropped unless he's he, he not fit enough to play. Um, what were your thoughts on the on the Berry game overall, Tom? I, it was a slow start. I was very nervy. Um, especially at the start because the Berry started very well um, and I said at the time to uh, my grand who I went with um, I just said uh, if we get a goal whilst they're on top now we'll be okay but at the moment it's not looking too good it was about five minutes later I went down the, the, end, the other end and, and scored um, so I think scoring that goal was crucial because it was a very lacklustre start from us that's not to take away from what a fantastic performance it was in the end um, but at the start of both halves, about 15-minute periods, I thought Bury were causing us a couple of problems, um, especially that first half. Um, but other than that, it was, like I said, it was a, a very good performance. I thought Dak was, I think that's the best individual performance I've seen a Rovers player put on in a long time. Um, I thought he was absolutely outstanding. Um, just the way that the ball sticks to his feet, his, his, his eye for goal with the fact he scored, he scored his effort uh, where he can pick out a pass um, I really was impressed by him and it's turning out if, if, if he can fire us help fire us to promotion um, and then do the same job in the championship not necessarily to promotion but just do a similar job in terms of um, the, the ability that he has then um, £750,000 is going to be an absolute bargain Oh yeah it will um... What are your thoughts on Dakar? Do you reckon we can keep hold of him if he's playing this well? 
I don't think he'll go in January, but... Maybe if they don't get promoted. Do you think there might be some big clubs coming in? Say we weren't to get promoted. I mean, Palace were interested in him, weren't they? When he was having his really good season with Gillingham, Palace were interested in him. Um, I'm not saying that a Premier League club's going to be interested in him again, but I think if we don't get promoted um, and we look to sell some players, uh, I think Dak could be one of the ones to go because we could probably make money on him. Um, and the championship yeah. club comes calling. Maybe one of the newly promoted teams from League One, if we're not one of them. Um, so I think it's a possibility, maybe, that he could make this up to the championship, even if we don't uh, make that step this season. I'd hope not, but um, couldn't blame him because I, th- I think he's above League One level. I think that he's he's one of the one of the best players in the division, um, and would probably get into to. Uh, the majority of teams uh, with the ability that he's got. Yeah. Um, well, he was Rovers' chat, uh, man of the match for um, the game against Bury, as voted by the fans. Um, so you can read all the reviews from the Bury game on the website, uh, and there'll be a link in the description for the Bury Match Centre, which has all the articles. Um, so let's hear what Antonson had to say about his brace against Bury. Yeah, it was perfect. Good day. Uh, I mean, uh, very nice uh, feeling to, to get the two goals uh, personally, but I mean, the main thing, three points and a clean sheet for the team, that's exactly what we needed right now. So we'll move on to, to last night's game against Oxford, or as it will be Tuesday nights. Um, do you think Tony Mowbray's found his, his strongest lineup, Scott? Do you think he's found his team now that he can start? Week in, week out. Definitely. Um, I think if you remember back to September when we were on that great run, I think we were actually playing like a 4 4 2 formation because Dak wasn't in the team. He was out injured at that point. And then Dak came in. When he came back in, it was away at Shrewsbury. Um, he was shoved out on the left wing, which I'm sure he didn't want to be playing there and we don't want to be seen there. So it was kind of a problem that we had this formation which is working well but then how do you accommodate Dak who should be our star player but gradually over the weeks that's evolved to this was it 4-2-3-1 formation which all revolves around Dak really and and it's proven fruitful because it, it just makes everything settled because I think a lot of the criticisms with Mowbray is that he's not maybe the greatest tactician and he, he's, he's kind of you know, thought about tinkering with different formations and different players, but now we've got this formation. The fans know what's going to happen. He knows what's going to happen, and it's just a case of motivating the players, which I think is his strength because the team now pretty much fixes itself. Um, the back four, you know, it's pretty solid. I know Cadiz was in for a while, but Nyambe's come in and done well. You've got three players for two central midfield positions, which is looking pretty good. Evans, you always get the niggles and small will be suspended here and there. So we've got Witten as well, who we're all wishing to, you know, improve by the week and I'm hopeful he will come good. Um, and then Bennett obviously out wide on the right, pretty much picks himself with Chapman on the sidelines. Conway's again always injured. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've got Antonson now on the left, who's is really coming to his own. I think a lot of his poor performances, where he got a lot of Christmas, was when he was played right down the middle. I think away at Wigan, you know, just really struggling in that role to, you know, hold the ball up, and you know, it, it was kind of that point where we thought. Yeah, he's not really up to it, but suddenly he looks such a threat down that left-hand side, so much pace and coming in from that touchline to score goals. So, yeah, it's it's just got a really balanced, settled team at the minute. Um, and so, you know, there's there's few arguments we have from the fans about who should be playing. Um, so hopefully, going forward, all these games coming up, it, it should keep us moving up the table. Yeah, well, just to go back onto Conway a little bit because Tom was uh, 
well, praising Conway at the start, saying he, he was making us tick, and then he got injured, and then I came back and I got injured again. Um, do you think there's a place in the side for him? Is he back fit now? Is he, is he officially fit? I'm not quite sure. He's getting that way, isn't he? He's not so far off, I don't think. Yeah, but he obviously wasn't in the, the squad on Tuesday, so, you know, it's probably not quite there, but I don't know what it is. If you just get those players, don't you? Just easily pick up niggles. But I'm a big fan of Conway. I just think the commitment, the effort you get from him and that bit of quality on the ball. But, you know, you need a couple of players for each position, really. And, you know, we're showing that we've got that that decent, well-rounded squad, and even though Conway does mid miss batches, matches here and there, we've you know we've got someone in Antonson who can easily slip on the left, and you know then when when Conway comes back in, you've got that condition for places, which is what you need. Um, but yeah, I hope I really hope Conway gets back in back to form because I, I do think he's a really important player for us. Yeah, and I think. Tom would probably echo that. Um, mm-hmm. Tom, we mentioned Evans uh, probably a few months ago now, and he went off injured again last night. It wasn't anything major. I don't think he was dizzy or feeling sick or something. But and if he carries on like this and he, he can't get a run in the get in the team because he's he's constantly injured, it, do you think Mowbray is going to look at maybe offloading him? Um, in uh, in January, not offloading him. And I've said previous that Evans is one of the players that I thought we could afford to replace in um, the summer because because of his injuries. Basically, I thought if a Championship club comes in offering five hundred thousand to a million pounds, then I'd, I'd take that just because as good as he, I think he is, and I do think he's a very good player, especially at League One level. Um, his injuries mean that he doesn't play enough. I mean, I don't think he's ever had a real... I don't think he's ever had a full season with us, has he, without being injured for for a month or a couple of months. Um, I remember when he first got here, he scored that goal against... Um, was, it, was it Bolton on his debut at Ewood? They beat him 4-1. Oh, I don't um, know. Yeah, it was. It was Bolton. And I'm pretty sure that he, he got injured shortly after that. Um, or maybe that was he'd just come back from an injury for that game as he was injured when we bought him but it was something like that um, so I don't want him to go because I do think he's a good player but like you say he's injured so 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 often um, if a club came in offering 500 to a million pounds for him 500,000 to a million pounds for him sorry um, <laughs> then do you take that? I think that's up to Mowbray. Um, if it was if you? If it was me, no, because I don't know if you'd be able to get anyone in that's as good. Um, well, I know that we wouldn't. Yeah. Um, but And when he's not in the side, I think we do lack something. Um, Whittingham offers more of a, a calm, composed nature, but um, Evans gives us that a, a more bite in midfield um, paired with Smallwood. So I think that is a tough one. I wouldn't like to see him leave, but then he's always injured. So I've always rated uh, Evans. Um, it, it's just been a real shame that he's never he's never been able to stay in the side long enough to to become like a top player, really. Because I think I think if it had been in week in, week out, he would. He'd, uh, I think he'd have gone by now. To be quite honest, um, but yeah. So Scott, have you have you got what are your thoughts on the the Oxford game last night? Yeah, brilliant, really. It's a bit of a shock to bring up at what twenty minutes was it? Um, I didn't actually go to the game. First one I missed for quite a while. Um, but yeah, tuned in and yeah, that meant really kind of what what we've been threatening to do for a while really is is you know get those goals early on and really put on the front foot and put teams to the sword uh, and the goals seem to be coming from all, all different areas of the park and and it's good to see really. Um, obviously disappointed to concede the two goals at the other end but I, I don't think we should dwell too much on that because we had such a away defensive record that um, and Oxford have done equally 
been in good goal scoring form, and there were two very good goals from them as well. They would think they both went in after both, simply. So, um, you know, the first one, some great bit of skill, and then a, a shot into the corner. Maybe the second one pulled down because they got closer to the man. But again, we can't really criticise Downing because he's just been brilliant ever since he's been in the team. So, overall, I think, yeah, we, we can't complain about a 4 2 win, especially when. On this one of away games, really, which you know could have gone the other way, really, all all tricky in their own own way. But we really tried to put put the results together and, and climb up the league. Yeah, and Tom, do you think the our away form this season is linked to how well we have travelled with away support, and compared to when you go to Ewood and it, it's pretty much silence unless they've done something wrong and then it's booze, but you go away and we've brought more fans than the home fans half the time and we're just like full of support behind them. Do you think there is a link between that and the form? I don't know. I think that maybe you could look at it like that and you could attribute some of it to that. But I also look at when teams are at home, they're going to come out more and attack you more than what they would if they were away. So I think Mowbray likes to play on the counter. Um, I think that's sort of football he seems to want to be playing. Um, and when we're at home, we can't do that because teams come to Ewood. I think the majority of teams come to Ewood um, thinking that you know it will take a point um, away from home, going to Blackburn because because they're one of the better teams in the division. Just like when we went to Wigan. We said we'd take a point going to Wigan. Um, because it's Wigan, they're yeah. one of the better teams in the division. Same with Shrewsbury. Went to Shrewsbury with the way they started and think, well, with the way they started, we'll take a point. And teams do that with us. So they maybe sit back a lot more at home than what they do when when they come when we're at home than what um they do when we're going away. So I think that's part to do with it. But I think having that having so many fans uh watch you play away can only have a positive impact. Um I think Bury was stupid to give us both ends behind the goal. I can't <laughs> believe that. I mean, if they wanted to give us two stands um, because of the amount of soul, then give us give us a, a behind the goal and a side or half of a side. Um, not give both both stands behind the goal. That's just it's ludicrous. I mean, you, the fans can act as a bit of a magnet, can't they? They always say. Um, yeah. And to have that magnet behind both goals, it's ridiculous. But it's something I've never, never come across before, and you're totally right about it being a magnet. And, you know, I have to think of, say, Liverpool and the famous top end, and you know, every, every, that's where you normally get your hardcore fans, isn't it? Right at one end, yeah. drag the ball into the net in the second half. But yeah, like organisation, like whether they could have, you know or mixed it around a bit, or whether we were just happy to get him, but it was certain benefit for Rovers, because it did have a good enough. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, like you say, it was just like that, that the cop end, that, like you said, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's renowned for having that, that type of, giving that type of atmosphere, and, and for Bury to give us both ends, is just, well, it's nonsensical on their part. Um, but look, back to your question, yeah, I do think that, that perhaps the, the travelling support does have an impact. Do I think it's also down to the way teams will set up against us at home compared to what they will do when they come to Ewood? I also think that has a bit of an impact. Um, so it's a bit of both, really. Um, maybe they feel there's less pressure playing um, away from home, given how how toxic the Ewood crowd can be at times. So yeah, a lot of different things uh, contributing factors to the fact that our away form has been so good. Yeah, and a, a, a round of applause to the 752 people that, that made the trip down there yesterday and hell of a journey for them. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. I, th- I think it was like 380 miles round trip or something like that. Well, like you said, Dan went, didn't he? And he um, didn't get back yeah. until 3 a.m. and set off. At what, when did he you set say off. set off? 12, were it? It was about midday, I think, mm. yeah. It's... So... Crazy to watch a, an hour and a half of football. <laughs> well, I'm sure that he w- he'll have been happy seeing the start that we made. Oh, he's, yeah. So, 
But no, yeah, uh, credit to, to those that made the, the way to Oxford. Yep, and if you didn't, you can go over to the website and check out the reviews. Uh, the link for the match centre will be in the description. Um, so let's hear what Tony Mowbray had to say after the Oxford game. I think ultimately we got the job done, though. You know, it was a, it was a bit of a scrappy goal. I think the um, Joe's goal that, that really put the game to bed. Um, but yeah, listen, I, to come away from home and win, you know, two wins in three days on the road is is important. It's um, we have to really rest and recharge the the batteries and get ready for the weekend. Right, looking forward now into what is going to be such a big game on Saturday. Uh, it could be a massive hurdle in the in the in the path, but we're heading into Bristol. It's the third game of five in two weeks. Um, I think Scott hit on it earlier, but is it is it probably the time where he's going to start rotating a few players? Yeah, maybe. I think well, a lot of ends on injuries. Say Corey Evans. I think Whittingham's probably a good shout to come back in. I'm surprised. And against Oxford, that Raheem Harper came on rather than Whittingham when Evans went off. But um, I Oxford, think he does seem to be favouring Harper, doesn't he? Yeah, he must see something in him because I remember right back against Scunthorpe in September, he'd hardly been with him out of nowhere. So he must be really impressing in training. But I still think he'll go with Whittingham on, um, on Saturday unless... You know, it's just a tiny niggle by, by Evans. And other than that, you can't really see him changing anything, really. And you'd think he'd be mad to after we've scored so many goals and looked so strong. I mean, there's obviously, there's the issue of tiredness um, that comes into it. And then we've got to play Blackpool on a few days later again. So maybe that might be in his mind to, you know, maybe rotate it a bit. But Again, I don't think you can do when we've been playing so well. Um, you know, just go for it. It might be a little weary, but I think these players, you know, the quality is good enough to get them over the line. And, you, you know, players like Elliot Bennett will, will, will run all day for you. So, um, yeah, let, let's not worry too much about, you know, trying to be clever and rotating it. Let's um, stick with a winning team. Maybe an odd change here and there, but um, very much looking forward to it. And I think I think I mentioned the Wimbledon game before, which was a letdown after we finally come into such good form. And I think now it just feels different, maybe, and, and that we really are coming to our own. The fact that we've We've solidified a position in the top six and, you know, the top teams are, are starting to drop points. I think the, the fixtures on Saturday, a lot of the teams around us play each other. So there's going, going to be points dropped all over the place. And it's just a huge opportunity with, with Bristol on Saturday and then a game in hand. Um, you know, that top two, those two top, top two positions looked kind of out of reach a few weeks ago, but suddenly, you know, it doesn't seem insurmountable now. And let's not forget both of those two teams have to come to Ewood later in the season. So, um, you know, a lot of points to play for and, and we, we really are in the, in the mix, but it all depends on keep getting these victories. Yeah, I do. I agree with you about the... Uh... Like back when the Wimble, when we're going into the Wimble game, we were, we thought right, we we're on a run here. But it's like it does feel different, and I can't quite explain why. It feels like we are, like the team is whole, and we we there's just confidence there, and you have a feeling that they're going to get the job done. But this, the game against Bristol is a typical Rovers game where the team needs points, and we're going to hand the opponent uh, the opponent some points. Um. Tom, do you think if we can if we can beat Bristol on Saturday, do you think that would mark us set off on a good run? Well, I mean, the Bury game I think was more important, you know, than the Bristol Rose. And the Bristol Rose one is important, but I think the Bury one was was more important simply because of the fact it was away from home. And like you said, like, like we said in the last podcast, it was it'd be typical Rovers to go. And just play absolutely terrible football, and and come away with a loss. Luckily, um, we didn't do. Um, 
and then we went to Oxford and got a very good result. But like I said in the past, this result against Oxford could be pretty much meaningless if we then do not get that result against Bristol Rovers. So I think when you say, well, is it, will it be good to set as a marker? Um, yeah, probably. Um, simply because a win and a win means that we're keeping up with with Wigan and Shrewsbury, which, by the way, is now looking a lot healthier. Nine points off Shrewsbury, uh, eight off Wigan um, with that game in hand. So hopefully that could, that'll be six and five come uh, uh, Wednesday next week. Um, so yeah, I suppose we, you could look at it as an important marker to see to see um, a run start. I mean, the run started with Bury, didn't it? Um, I think that that was that was yeah. that was the important one. I think Bury. Um, the, all the games now have just got to be other other results that we 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 well other games that we take by the scruff of the neck and really um, go out and dominate like we have against um, Oxford and like we have against Bury. Um, it's got to be done at Ewood now. They've only won one of the last five, and we're we're unbeaten in five. So, um, granted, two of them have been draws, but uh, so yeah, I would expect us to put in a performance and um, take those take those three points. Uh, but we have to be careful not to not to um, be be uh, what's the word complacent. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can see all the preview to the Bristol game. Uh, coming out Thursday, Friday. Uh, the match centre link will be in the description as well. Um, so let's hear what Tony Mowbray had to say about bringing that away for him back to Ewood Park. Yeah, I think it's important for the team, for the club. We have to um, we have to be strong at home. I've said that right from the start of the season. We're going to have to pick up most of our points this year at home. We have to uh, really focus on each game. We have to not be overly cavalier, uh, but we have to be really positive. Um, yeah, and have belief and confidence and, and, and ask questions of the opposition and um, and that's what we aim to do at the weekend. So let's talk about uh, next Tuesday, the game in hand. And is this the first time Gary Boy has come back to Ewood, I think? I know we've been to Blackpool. No, second. FA oh Cup. yes, it was, yeah. Um, so yeah, I doubt, that, I doubt there'll be much reception now, but... Um, we're at Blackpool in the league, so they're not doing too bad, are they? They're 10th. Um, I think they lost last night, but how how big is it just to get that game in hand? I mean, we did. We, we, who was it last time? The other game in hand, where we was it Fleetwood? And uh, I think a lot of people were were expecting Fleetwood. Yeah, we sort of we were counting the as three. I know I was. And I don't know why we were counting it as three points before we even played the game, and then. It's a common problem when you see the game in hand, though, isn't yeah. it? That you look at it and think, well, there's three points there for us. Yeah. Um, it's wrong to think like that, but I don't think you were the only one. So. Yeah, as you were saying, Tom, you know, you, you've got this propensity to just have those points on, but games in hand aren't won games. And, um, you know, we haven't got those points yet. I was actually thinking before the Oxford game, I'll probably take seven points from these three games this week, but suddenly we've got this great result at Oxford. Um, you, you think we should win it on Saturday, and suddenly, you know, you back us against Blackpool. Again, will the games catch up with them? Maybe, but then Blackpool have had the same number of games, and let's not forget they were they were the two side last season, and. We were a championship side. I know we both obviously League One now, but you know we we should be we should be favourites for that really. Um, again, we should have a good following over there. Um, it, it it's not going to be a write off. Supposing you know we don't win it, maybe if we get a draw, it might be a good point um, because you know we, we stay unbeaten. We we keep these points and. And overall, come on, we're not going to win every game. You know, we will slip up here and there. So, you know, let's not it be panic stations if we don't win that match. But I'd, I'd still back us to win. Yeah, I'm, 
He's not going to have an eye on the, the FA Cup, is he, Tom? I don't think he's he's going to be resting any players for that. I think he's he's going to be fully in for for that Blackpool game. Oh, I can't imagine him resting players. If anything, he'll rest players against Crew. Yeah. So you can see the build up to the Blackpool game uh, on the Monday or before the game. Uh, the link for the match centre will be in the description below. Let's hear from Mogru and what he had to say about the young star Not all. Joe's brilliant. Done well right since, he, since the minute he came in the door. He's, he's working hard. Great attitude for a young player. Um, he's got everything really. So um, we're grateful to have him. Right, so uh, that's pretty much it. That's uh, the podcast done. So if you had to, if you had to sum up the week, Scott, what would you, what would you say? Um, yeah, positive week. I think we're all feeling more positive again. I think uh, a few weeks ago there was these calls for you know should Mowbray sacked and all this, and it just seems ridiculous now, doesn't it? That we, we're comfortable and. and What's happy? You can tell, you know, on social media that the players love each other, and and it's just it's all seeming so positive at the minute. So um, yeah, let's hope it carries on. What about you, Tom? How do you how do you describe the last week? Um, encouraging, because I think that it's it, it, it's still a long way to go. I think, um, and we'll have a really good idea after Blackpool as to um. Where where we're gonna be really, um, but I mean you've been able to get the wins against the uh, Bury and then our promotion rivals Oxford, um, and then Shrewsbury and Wigan both lost uh, in the in the week, uh, not in the week, but in in uh, Wigan on Saturday and Shrewsbury on Tuesday. Okay. To um, Bury, Shrewsbury got yeah, got beat off Bury, um, and uh, Wigan off Bradford. So we've managed to to pick up uh, some points and get close to them, but with two wins, um, with the game in hand, hopefully, like I said earlier, reduces six and five. So yeah, very encouraging. Um, would be how I would I would describe it, simply because there's no talk anymore of of this Mowbray being sacked thing is the uh, like Scott said there were people calling for his head which to me was ludicrous I got the frustrations but it was far too early and hopefully now he's proven that it was too early we can go on and put a win run together and start to to get into those automatic promotion places in the, the next month or so hopefully um, hopefully by Christmas we'll be only a couple of points off that top two, maybe even in that top two, if Shrewsbury and we're going to have a little ba- a bad little run. Um, but yeah, definitely encouraging, um, encouraging signs. Definitely. So keep your eyes on roverschat.com. Uh, check out all the articles. Get some uh, following the Twitter at rovers underscore chat. And, uh, and we'll be back next week. Um, so I just want to say a special thanks for, for Scott to coming on. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Brilliant. It's been uh, brilliant having you on. And uh, I'll go out and buy the 4,000 Holes fanzine and uh, obviously buy the, the next one when it's out. Um, and go and follow... Um, sorry, Scott, I'm not quite sure what the, the your Twitter handle is. What is um, it? So the one for fanzine is at Rose Fanzine and my personal one is at SA Sumner. So yeah, go and follow them too and uh, you'll keep you up to date when the, the new ones are coming out. Um, so thank you for what, listening to the podcast and uh, we'll be back next week. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, a thanks for Tom. Uh, not a problem. Uh, pleasure as always and lovely to chat to you, Scott, as well. And um, we'll, uh, we'll see you again next week. podcast if you've enjoyed it why not head over to our twitter at rovers underscore chat and let us know what you thought and also check out the website roverschat.com for all the content that we've put out during the week